completely different nowadays. We eat our favorite foods, spend time with friends and relatives, enjoy the moon and the flowers. So much easier. Basically, we just do all the things that people like doing and don't take a whole lot of effort. Sounds like Paimon's kind of festival. <laughs> with your great taste in food, Moonchase Festival is sure to be to your liking. Hey! If you got a problem with Paimon's taste, just spit it out! Um, so are you guys free these days? I'm taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs. If possible, I'd like you to be my culinary consultants. That's right. Getting some suggestions from friends will broaden your horizons. Masterful chefs, huh? So is that like a competition? <laughs> All right, yeah. I guess you probably haven't heard about it before. Every year, Moon Chase Festival has a different theme, usually picked by the Qixing. This year's theme is Feast of the Bounteous Land, so the Qixing decided to organize a cooking competition. Feast of the Bounteous Land. Hmm. Pretty much sums up what Leo is all about. Great theme. I totally agree. I heard it was Ningguang that came up with it. She's so amazing and so full of mystery. Well, I want to take part in the competition, but coming up with new dishes is hard work. By the time you finally thought of something, cooked it, taste tested it, it can be hard to judge whether you're really into something or not. And so, I was thinking, I could get the two of you to help by gathering everyone's thoughts on what makes a great dish. I really want to think outside the box this time. And to do that, I'm going to need lots of different ideas from lots of different people. This'll be a piece of cake! We've got friends from all over the map, haven't we? <laughs> you sound pretty confident. Well, you know, not to brag or anything. But first things first, let's have a delicious one-man meal. After that, we can go around to all of our friends in Liyue and get their ideas one by one. Okay, great. Also, Goba should be back soon, so we can all go together. Here's your black back perch stew, folks. Mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> it's my pleasure. That was so delicious. Theory confirmed, this is definitely chili pepper weather. Sheng Ling can be a bit of a handful, so please look out for her while you're out and about. Come on, Dad! Why would you say that? Because I know you all too well, my dear. That's why. You mustn't be quite so reckless when you're out in the wild, you understand? You'd do well to be a little more cautious, like our traveler friend. Don't worry, we're all friends here. Let's all look out for each other. Ah, and Guoma's back. Rolly pulling around as usual. All right, let's pack up and head out. There is no escape! That we're looking for, right? Hu Tao always seems to have a unique perspective, so let's make this our first stop. What, what, what? My ears are burning. Did somebody say my name? Uh, yeah, it's Paimon and the Traveler. Oh, and Sheng Ling, too. Oh, of course, Hu Tao. Way, way outside the box. Meaning, you're here for some other reason, right? How might I be of assistance? Well, Hu Tao, I wanted to ask you, what kind of food do you like? What food I like? Hmm, off the top of my head, I don't really have an answer. Wow, 
So even Hootel gets lost for words sometimes. Paimon sure didn't see that coming. Come on, even the chirpiest birds clock out for the night, right? I'm no different. Uh, pretty sure clocking out isn't something birds do, but okay. <laughs> All right, there's no need to overcomplicate it. Just pick a dish and tell me what you like about it. I'm doing some market research. I see, I see. Launching a new dish? Well, let me say right off the bat, nothing weird, okay? Some poached fish, a side of shrimp dumplings, that is all you need. Mm, poached fish and shrimp dumplings, that's a bit ordinary, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. Think about it. Poached fish is hot and spicy with a powerful aroma. It's a dynamic dish. Add a side of shrimp dumplings, and there's your static component. Got it? Dynamic? Hmm. Oh, I can do dynamic. Mushroom slimes do it. No, 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 not that kind of dynamic. <laughs> a dish is more than substance. It's a mood. Poached fish is red and spicy. It elicits a response from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. That's why I call it dynamic. Shrimp dumplings are more subdued, clear and smooth with a pure and subtle fragrance. I call that static. Combining dynamic and static is how you create a perfectly balanced meal. A union between opposite but complementary features coexisting in perfect harmony. Oh, Paimon didn't follow that at all. But at the same time, it kind of sounded smart, so... Okay... Dynamic and static. Opposite, but complementary. Um, so is this just another way of saying you should keep everything balanced? You know, a little meat, a little veggie, a little salt, a little sugar? Bingo! Except I don't think you need to have a sweet dish for it to be a complete meal. Personally, I always skip dessert. Okay, I think I got it. At first I thought you were just goofing around, but actually you make a really good point. <laughs> How did I ever doubt you, Hu Tao? Thanks! When it comes to telling tales, the storytellers have got nothing on Hu Tao! Hmm? Sounds suspiciously like a compliment to me. I'll take it. Uh-huh. Well, at least one of you gets it. Everything in this world runs on its own set of principles, be it the circle of life or sugar and spice. You either get it or you don't. Since the Traveler seems to approve, I'll make sure to factor it in. Hmm, Paimon thinks we're pretty much done here now. Let's head to Boo Boo Pharmacy next! Boo Boo Pharmacy? Yeah, you'll definitely get some interesting responses over there. <laughs> Consumer psychology. Illusion shattered. Is everything okay? Why, if it isn't the special guests who seldom visit. Less busy than usual, I see. Yikes! Oh, what happened to Baiju's voice? Sh excuse me? The neck! Oh, it's just Changsheng. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Here to procure an herbal remedy, I presume? Oh no, we actually came for the conversation this time. We're here to talk food. 
I'm entering this year's cooking competition, so I wanted to ask you both... Oh, wait, there's three of you. <laughs> I wanted to ask the three of you what kind of food you like. <laughs> Most astutely self-corrected, we shall surely supply our assistance. You need to know what food I like? Hmm... It's all the same. No flavor. Chi-Chi has some gustatory dysfunction and can't taste any food. Make no mistake, she's not being uncooperative. Oh, I understand. That's fine. Still, I'd expect Chi-Chi to have some sort of dietary preferences, though. There must be some dishes that you like the sensation of. Sensation? Hmm. Yes. There's one. Coconut milk. Nice and cold. Well, that doesn't help us. It's not a dish, it's a drink. How about you two? Any thoughts? I like bite-sized morsels of meat. I agree with Changsheng. Many of our patients are the elderly and young children. They find large chunks of fowl or seafood difficult to swallow and digest. Dishes where the ingredients have been finely chopped, on the other hand, are far more suitable for them. We also see plenty of people with colds and sore throats who find it difficult to eat rich food. From a purely pharmaceutical perspective, I tend to recommend soups and stews. Got it! Uh, would that be medicinal soups and stews? Ugh, medicinal soup. I don't like it. Hmm, I must apologize for having such a one-track mind. It's a little difficult to think about food without worrying about the health implications these days. We've had quite the endless stream of patients recently. If you ask me, I think the changing weather is to blame. That's okay. Everyone's input counts. Keeping it seasonal and suitable for all ages sounds like a pretty good idea to Paimon. Medicinal dishes have higher demands in terms of nutritional balance than the kind of food I normally cook. I don't usually focus on medicinal properties, but since this is for a competition, maybe I can score more points by taking both flavor and function into account. Food with substance. Always better. Everyone will like it. It's a great suggestion. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. As long as we could help. It's great to have a doctor's unique perspective. I'm feeling inspired. Oh, how you flatter me. Receptivity to sensible suggestions make for a savvy chef. Oh, she is! Creating new dishes is Xiangling's favorite thing to do! You can be sure she'll put lots of care and attention into it. <laughs> Everyone's got their hobbies, and mine is cooking. Usually I just go with my own ideas, but having a whole new perspective this time is sure to make a big difference to the end result. Great! That makes this whole trip worth it! Alright, time to move on to the next! So we've got an independent thinker's perspective, and a health perspective. Hmm. Next, Paimon thinks we should probably talk to some picky eaters. It's the Traveler in Paimon, and Xiangling. Uh, greetings, friends. It's been a while. Hey, what brings you here? Has something happened? What's with this great big stone on the ground? Long story. 
So, just to confirm, I will assume responsibility for handling this stone of unknown origin. Any objections? None here. You know how to get things done, Kitching. As long as it's with you, I can rest easy knowing that it's in safe hands. Mm, should I take this to mean that you doubt the relative safety of leaving this in the hands of the Tianchuan? Huh? Well, for starters, Ketching is the one who's always out running errands, rain or shine. Besides, you don't seem to give a wooden more about this whole thing anyway, so what's it to you? I was merely joking. You, meanwhile, seem only too ready to pounce when an opportunity to publicly lambaste me arises. Even when it means giving our poor mutual friend here the cold shoulder. By no means. You wish to know about the stone, I presume. Then let me invite the great seafarer, Captain Beto, to tell the story, if she would be so kind. You... Ugh, fine. Well, it's a big one, right? And such a smooth surface, too. Makes you think there's gotta be a good chunk of jade in there. It was found by a fishing crew, not far off the coast. It must have been underwater for years. So the erosion will be what's given it that smooth finish. Finds like this cannot be kept as private property, and must be submitted to a holder of public office. Placing it into our custody will also give them peace of mind. So, what's inside it? Well, we've hit it with just about every weapon we could get our hands on and haven't managed to even dent it yet. Clearly there's more to it than meets the eye. No weapon could smash it open. Wow. Paimon doesn't think we've ever encountered a stone like that before. Kuching has taken an unusually keen interest in this giant stone, which is why we are leaving the matter in her capable hands. Let's put that aside for a second. Traveler, what brings you here? Were you looking for someone? Actually, we were looking for all of you! We need all hands on deck here! Oh? Hopefully not because there's been some sort of cataclysmic event. No, no, nothing like that. Paimon's just getting carried away. I just wanted to ask everyone about their food preferences. Food preferences? That's a little unexpected. I have rather simple tastes. Precise, pure, smart, and sophisticated. That is all I require. That's your idea of simple, huh? I summed up my culinary requirements in four words. Is that insufficiently simple for you? A few weeks out on the open ocean would fix your flawed definition of simplicity, let me tell you that. What about you, Beto? Me? Ah, uh, if it's freshly cooked and piping hot, that floats my boat. If it's got a little chili pepper in there too, I'm one very happy captain. Paimon thought you would have said bar food. <laughs> Oh, bar food works, too. As for me, it's got to be seafood. Okay, got it. So, seafood. Piping hot and, uh, simple but sophisticated. And that's where I would disagree. Traveler, surely you've heard of golden shrimp balls. Oh my, they're my favorite. You need to wash and devein the shrimp, wrap it in finely sliced potato strips, then deep fry it to perfection. There's no room for cutting corners. They're very precisely put together. They taste pure, the presentation is smart, and the skill needed to cook them is highly sophisticated. It fits Ming Wang's forward summary to the letter. Huh, so what you're saying is, for all the frills and trills, Good food is all the same at the core? I heartily agree. Golden shrimp balls are a prime example. Their essence lies in combining art and nutrition in a single package. It is a dish of true value. Okay, got it. So Kuching loves golden shrimp balls. I didn't say that. Did I? <laughs> no, at least not outright. Alrighty. Thanks for all your input. I'll be sure to take it all into consideration. Traveler, Paimon, do you have anything planned after this? Good. I'd like you to help me investigate something. It's about this stone. You picked the right people for the job. We investigate stuff all the time. 
My thoughts exactly. The Qixing has a public duty to deliver our final verdict to the fishermen, but there are also some things I would like to investigate on a personal level. I'm sure you've become acquainted with the general background of the Moonchase Festival. However, I have my own understanding of this festival's roots. My grandfather was a researcher of Liyue's traditions. In his notes, he indicated that there was a deity called the Stove God in ancient Liyue, which people paid tribute to at a certain time of the year. Very few written records make mention of the Stove God, and those that do are notoriously confusing. Some scholars believe that the Stove God was just another title held by the Lord of Geo, but others suggest that this was a different deity altogether. One folktale even claims that the ancients found the Stove God's shrine, but there was no statue. Only a huge, smooth slab of stone. Shortly after it was found, the stone was lost in transit, and it hasn't been seen since. This stone here has all the same features, so I suspect it could be the one that went missing all those years ago. After many years of researching ancient texts, my grandfather came to believe that the practice of paying seasonal tribute to the Stove God may be best described as a festival. He called it the Stove God Festival. That would make it the forerunner to the Moonchase Festival we know today. But this is all just theory and conjecture. To prove any of it, we'd need to start by identifying who the Stove God really was. Now that Rex Lapis has passed on, and Liwa has entered the age of humankind, his successor should continue to respect our nation's culture and traditions, just as he did. That's why I think the responsibility for this situation should fall to me. It's a chance to shed light on our history, revitalize an ancient tradition, and possibly prove my grandfather's hypothesis along the way. With any luck, we'll nail all three in one fell swoop. It was just a couple of days ago that we received this stone. Right after, we decided to use food as the central theme for this year's festival. It makes me wonder. Maybe a divine will is at work behind all of this. Three birds with one stone, huh? That's pretty efficient, even for cooking! Hey, don't worry about that. That sounds super important, so don't mind me. Besides, we're only... <clears throat> Wait a second. I got it! What? Why are you shouting? Kaching, can I tag along for your investigation? Uh-huh, uh, but... Since it's all about the stove god, I might get to learn something useful about cooking along the way. It'll be great inspiration for me in the competition. Please, let me come along. I promise I'll help. If it means that much to you... Okay, I suppose you can come. Really? Yay! Thank you so much! You're the best! <clears throat> now that that's settled, time to get going. Jingsa Village is said to be home to a lot of historical texts, so I'd like to start by making some inquiries there. Alright, then it's off to Jingsa we go!
Astra Abyss. Add Astra Abbott. 